plans changed dramatically. The Burmese Thakins would now invade Burma with the Japanese army. On the eve of the invasion, Aung San called the 30 Thakins together. That night, they became the legendary 30 comrades, founders of the Burma Independence Army. We became of the same flesh and blood. We had to recite an oath saying we were prepared to sacrifice our lives for our country, our people and our army. It was the first time since the days of the Burmese king that Burmese people were actually heading a patriotic fighting force. When the British heard about us, they sentenced us to death in our absence. So we changed our names and after that, the British didn't know who was who. The Burma Independence Army entered Burma with the Japanese 15th Army. Thousands of other young Burmese nationalists joined as they advanced. They saw little fighting as the British gave only mild resistance and civilians in the towns and villages were often welcoming. Meanwhile, the British found themselves totally unprepared to meet the Japanese invasion. In Rangoon, the recently appointed governor, Sir Reginald Dorman Smith, did his best to keep order as the infrastructure of the country crumbled. This was the man who would become Aung San's bitter enemy after the war. Dorman Smith had been a Conservative Member of Parliament and Minister of Agriculture in the wartime cabinet. The Conservative government, obviously, wanted to get rid of this, um, uh, uh, no doubt, slightly incompetent uh, um, cabinet member and thought it was conv the convenient way of doing it would be to dump him on Burma. He liked anybody who entertained him and amused him and anybody wh whom really he could patronise. He didn't like people on top. He liked um, people, he liked subordinates who, who would uh, entertain him and so on. One must say this, that, that his, uh, his judgments of people, I think, were so often totally wrong. Dorman Smith had ruled the Burmese through his prime minister and close friend, U So, who was later to hang for the murder of Aung San. Anybody who was not Dorman Smith's creature was not acceptable to him. Who saw was his creature, and he liked him. Dorman Smith led the evacuation of Burma and took the government to the Indian hill station Simla, where he planned for his eventual post-war return. He sat in the clouds, more or less literally, in Simla, 7,000 feet, with his head joining his clouds, and uh, planned a very, very theoretical constitution and reconstitution of Burma. In a nutshell, um, and none of his plans came to anything because um, the war ended too soon and the uh, political situation was such that they were just totally impractical. Meanwhile in Burma, Aung San was now pressing his Japanese masters hard for independence and finding them very reluctant indeed. We were only in Burma to drive the British out of India not to give the Burmese independence. Reaching India would have been impossible for our military without a secure foothold in Burma. Rangoon fell, but still the Japanese refused to deliver independence to the Burmese. Thakin Kin Aung met Aung San and found him angry. We are being cheated. That's what he told me. The Japanese have broken their promise, he said. We could have rebelled then and there, but we thought again. Even though we in the leadership were not satisfied with the Japanese, the Burmese people were at that point quite content. But as the occupation continued, the Burmese people began to wonder whether they hadn't merely replaced one colonial master with another. A lot of people had imagined that the Japanese, being fellow Asians, would bring them independence and uh, they would 
uh, be able to govern their own country. But in fact, what they saw was that the Japanese military administration was far worse than the British colonial administration. But Aung San continued in the Japanese military government until finally, on August 1st, 1943, Burma was declared independent. Aung San was appointed Minister of War in the new administration. Independent Burma, recognized only by Japan and the Axis countries, immediately declared war on Britain and her allies. Perhaps unsurprisingly, the newfound independence brought no real freedom to the Burmese. A year later, the British offensive in northern Burma was making advances, and the fortunes of war began to swing against the Japanese. Aung San now made contact with the British and offered to rise against his former collaborators. Mountbatten, the supreme Allied commander in Southeast Asia, consulted the experts on Burma. The advice was don't touch him for the bark pill, which would have been disastrous. They were there, and something had to be done. Um, and the reason was there were a lot of uh, anti-British... Um, communists and undesirables and, and uh, the moment that uh, that uh, they've done their job against the Japanese they're going to turn on us. Anthony Eden, then Foreign Secretary, wrote to Prime Minister Churchill, surely we should not boost these people so much. They will give us great trouble hereafter. Churchill replied, I cordially agree with you. But Mountbatten took his own line. Mark Latin understood that my father was a force to be reckoned with within Burma and uh, I, I think he also uh, accepted the fact that the Burmese army could be of considerable help to the Allied armies. Churchill wrote in his diary some weeks later, I hope Mountbatten is not going to meddle in Burmese politics. Mountbatten uh, uh, told me that uh, he uh, had to be very careful uh, to prevent uh, the line he was taking on his initiative from getting back to uh, Churchill in London because he was quite certain that Churchill would then have given him the sack. <laughs> At midnight on the 27th of March 1945, the rebellion went ahead. And some weeks later, Aung San crossed the Japanese lines to make direct contact with the British. General Slim later vividly described in his war memoir how Aung San justified his defection to the British as a response to Japanese ill-treatment. Go on, Aung San, I said. You only come to us because you see we are winning. It wouldn't be much good coming to you if you weren't, would it? He replied, simply. I could not question the truth of this. But there is evidence that Aung San was planning to defect as early as mid-1943, long before the tide of war had turned against the Japanese. British intelligence in India were informed by their agent, Major Seagram. Seagram was the British leader of the Karens in, in uh, the hills to the east of Burma. And uh, he had a first-hand report that Aung San, in 1943, was prepared and preparing to turn on the Japanese. Nevertheless, the view of Aung San as a Johnny-come-lately persisted. The general impression in the British forces of uh, Aung San and his merry men was that they had jumped on the bandwagon at the very last moment and therefore, although we had to treat them with respect and this and that, they weren't really, um, they weren't a big deal. In May, the British recaptured Rangoon and accepted the Japanese surrender. Aung San set about integrating his forces, now called the anti-fascist organization, into the British army for continuing the war against the Japanese. For at that point, their total surrender still seemed a distant prospect. Then, everything changed. The moment the bomb dropped, we were caught with our pants very badly down because immediately the AFO and Aung San um, 